Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here and you are very welcome my friends and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Are you feeling charitable? Then smash the subscribe button and the like button and please do follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. I have a rumour for you this morning, an exciting rumour that if you're American, you should certainly take with a grain of salt. And if you're British, you certainly, almost certainly, must take it with a pinch of salt. Why do us Brits say pinch? Because we grab a pinch of salt and throw it over our shoulders for good luck. So this morning on Big Mouth here on the DC Daily, welcome to Monday's edition of the DC Daily. We have a rumour that Joaquin Phoenix the Joker will be Matt Reeves' Joker in The Batman. Wow, what a massive rumour. For the beginning, the premiere of this brand new week. Um, so what do I think about this rumour? As I say, someone echoed this to me. Um, not too sure about this source, no disrespect if you're watching. Um, but we're going to have to wait and see on this one. But what I think this is, this would be absolutely the right way to go if this is indeed happening. Um, because Joaquin Phoenix is the Joker, made over a billion dollars. He resonates with so many people. And we still don't know what universe the Batman is in. Is it in the DCEU? Unlikely. Could be a young Batfleck. Likely. Unlikely. Who knows? But if Robert Pattinson's the Batman is from another universe, why can't he be from Joaquin Phoenix's the Joker? Um, now, he would be a lot older now, obviously. There's that interesting element and facet to it. Of course, if you've seen uh, Todd Phillips, the Joker, we don't even know if this guy is a Joker or if he's a copycat or if he's imagining the same thing. So it's all out there. Now, we heard a lot of rumours as this film was released about sequels. Then we, they said no. Then they said if the good idea comes up. So we haven't heard anything. And one of the reasons may be because Joaquin Phoenix is in the Batman. Now, knowing what kind of actor Joaquin is, um, it's not like him to want to be a franchise character. But it could be the way he wants to go. Um, also, it will be easier for him to continue his other core projects and cameoing in films or playing small parts in films. Now, the rumour, of course, about this Joker is, the other rumour is, that they'll be casting very soon and we'll be hearing something very soon. So I don't know. As I say, I'm not, I'm not sure. But as an idea, as an idea to convince people to go back to cinemas, this could be a brilliant idea. As you know, I think cinema is dead. I think it could be a year before people are convinced it, to go back in their masses to movie theatres. So things like this could be a really, really good idea. And I'm look, I'm for it. We all know it would be epic. It would be awesome. Joaquin Phoenix did a great job. He's a great Joker. And to continue this arc in The Batman would be a very, very interesting idea. I mean, what are we talking about here? Um, this guy is, you know, the Joker movie is set in the 80s. So you're talking about the 90s. To you could be talking about 25, 30 years on. So, again, it, does, it, does it make sense um, numerically? Not really. And this is why I have my doubts. Um, how old would he be now? Um, so there's interesting facets. But don't forget, the Batman movie isn't set in 2021. The Batman movie allegedly is set in the 90s. So, again, then now I have to go back on myself and say it's a lot more realistic that this could be done because this film was set in the mid-80s and if this is a 90s Batman, that's fine. That could work, which would mean Robert Pattinson and Joaquin Phoenix are part of the same universe. So, it is more possible than I thought, but again, I don't know. Um, but as I say, if you, if you want to get hyped, and if you want to get interest, and there's interest to this movie, it's a damn Batman movie directed by one of the best directors out there, Matt Reeves. And Robert Pattinson is a great indie actor. So there's no question about this. This would be a brilliant idea and um, an idea I'd absolutely be all for. 
Now, talking about the Joker, there's loads of discussions with David Ayer, keep on promoting himself on Twitter, to convince AT&T to release his cut of the Suicide Squad. And he's been talking a lot about the Joker's motivations. And, and I, I think it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of interesting as well where we go over to Harley Quinn because there's been discussions about Harley Quinn kind of running the Suicide Squad in the comics, which I think she's doing now. Now, could we have an interesting situation in James Gunn's Suicide Squad where Harley Quinn is actually the leader of this newly formed Suicide Squad? I believe with the way things are now um, within the culture war and uh, female representation, this could be a good idea. Now, a lot of um, Jared Leto, uh, Margot Robbie, Harley fans don't like this idea because she's supposed to be this, you know, brutal, psychotic killer. But she's a psychotic killer with a heart. Now, I would be OK with this as long as she's still her. As long as she doesn't change into this new, boring, pure-hearted character, she has to lead the Suicide Squad how Harley Quinn would lead the Suicide Squad, which would be brutally. I think Margot Robbie could pull this off. And I think this, this kind of female representation is a lot better than what they did on Birds of Prey, by the way, in which they spend half the film whining about how men take, you know, take credit for what women do and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I still don't think... Birds of Prey is a bad movie, but I just think you can. There's there's positive representation and there's negative toxic rep representation as well. So I would absolutely be all for Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn being in charge, being the leader of of this new Suicide Squad. That would be a very intense, interesting concept, and it wouldn't surprise me because James Gunn has already said that Margot Robbie. We assume that Margot Robbie was playing a little tiny bit. Of, of, of a role in James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Um, I didn't think that. I thought that would be dumb. It's Harley Quinn. It's Margot Robbie. Why would she do it? You know, she really loves playing this character. And they, you know, Warner Brothers love her playing this character. It worked out really well for her. And the, and the studio in um, David Ayer's theatrical cut, at least. And his extended cut on Blu-ray and DVD in 4K of the Suicide Squad. So there would be absolutely no reason... Um, why she couldn't be the leader. I know a lot of people don't like it, but as I say, if she's still Harley, it can really work out. So that would be a really exciting turn of events. Now, the producer of The Flash was on Twitter a few days ago, and a fan asked her about where we are with the development of the Flashpoint movie, and she said, news to come very, very soon. Again, very awesome, exciting news. So can't wait to hear about that. I want to hear that Cyborg's in it. I want to hear what they're doing with it. Someone said to me the other day, well, is Ezra Merstein involved? And I'm thinking, why wouldn't he be? And people are still going on about that April Fool's joke that everybody thinks was serious. And, and a lot of people want don't like Ezra Miller. I don't know why. I think Ezra's a great kid. And I think he's a really talented actor. And Warner Brothers love him. And he absolutely isn't going anywhere. Now, waking up this morning, we heard some exciting news. The Nerd Queens podcast will be hosting a Justice Con. Now, obviously, a Justice Con for Justice League. Now, this will be for charity, but some very exciting news because there's going to be some really awesome guests on there. Our very own um, Chris Von Svensson from, Svensson from Ping Pong Flicks. But Zack Snyder and Jay Oliver are going to guest on that as well. And that's mid-July. So I'm really, really excited about that. But going to our main headline, what do you think about the rumour that Joaquin Phoenix is actually Matt Reeves' Joker in The Batman and they're part of the same universe? Um, I know what I think. I know I think it's brilliant. This is what I wanted all along. I assume this is why they created this timeline, um, because before they commissioned Zack to do his version of Justice League, they were going a different direction. And they wanted to change Batman. And Matt Reeves obviously clearly didn't want Ben Affleck as the Batman. However you feel about Ben Affleck as the Batman. I love Ben's Batman. But then if we're going to fight for, um, you know, freedom of creativity, then we've got to allow Matt to, you know, have the Batman that he wants. And it looks like for sure Joker will play a little part in the first film and play a huger part 
in the Batman sequels. Again, very, very exciting. So I'm for this. Um, I'm 50-50 on it, as I've already said. I don't know if it's true. But just remembering that the Batman is set in the 90s is very doable. There's no reason this can't happen. That would mean he's a black label Batman, which means the DCEU Batman is still Ben Affleck. So anything is possible there. So he can be Batman on HBO Max still, as I predicted when Zack Snyder's Justice League was announced. But as I said, comment down below, like, share and subscribe, and I'll be back tomorrow with even more DC Daily. See you again soon. Bye-bye.